Hello, avid readers, book nerds, and casual observers, and welcome to the read along brought to you by the Lit Round Table. I'm Joseph. And I'm Anna, and today we're talking about The Light of the Midnight Stars by Rena Rossmeyer. So, welcome back to part 17 of week 7, or, you know, it's week 7, part 17, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> again, the poll for the Patreon on our next read-along is available, um, so you have to be a $5 tier patron to have access to that. Um, so, head over there, partake, tell us what we're going to read next. Um, and if you want a bonus episode every month, you can subscribe to the $10 mm. uh, level and you'll have access to that bonus content if you can't get enough. So Absolutely. check it out. Yeah. All right. Let's dive into it here. So we've got our epigraph, um, which is humans are resilient, which. Uh, That's good. This particular brand, these particular humans are <laughs> resilient but i feel very badly for them um mm-hmm. and the black mist can find a way even in the smallest crack so that does not bode well nope <laughs> um we jump in with hannah first um oh wait does she go by hannah now hold on i have her listed as hannah wait. instead of anna now i need to look it up does she that would be weird I thought it was just Anna. She is oh, Hannah Anna. now. She's back to Hannah. Okay. Oh, hold on. Cool. Love that. Um, oh, that's so weird. But I, I'm here for it because it makes sense because nope. she accepted her birthright in the last section. So yeah. now she's... It was because of that. Yeah. She is who she is. She's not going to hide anymore. I love it. I love her that's character cool. growth. She is my favorite. Good catch, dude. <sighs> That totally went over my head that her name changed back. That's a good catch. Well, it helps that I write down their names and then write notes. So I was like, why did I write Hannah yeah. this time? I've been so good about writing their, like, mm-hmm. code names. Anyway, Hannah. Um, she has hidden the babies in a cave near yep. the linden tree, which is where they had, like, buried their little things previously. The mementos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And she uses her power to create a cradle and a door for the cave. And the whole section is written so beautifully. Like, that's mm-hmm. basically what happens. But the prose is fantastic. Yeah. It's very entertaining. Yeah. To read. It was a good, mm-hmm. it was a good little, it was a very short section, but it was really cool. Yeah. Yep. It, visually, like, very cool. Mm-hmm. So. And they're swaddled in, in like, branches and mm-hmm. laying on little moss mattresses mm-hmm. in a wooden cradle and it's kind of like the forest is looking after him now yeah so yeah like she's she poured everything she had into like creating a little safe space for them until she can figure out what to do mm-hmm. um so and that's where her chapter ends so very short yep yep and then we go back to stana stana hogged most of the pages for this section yes um, she's really missing her family. She is pregnant now. Yay. Gross. Hate it. Um, and Theodore wants to show her something. So she like gets naked and she's like, you should get naked too. And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> um, uh, but, but. I should not be here. <laughs> <laughs> but what happens is that she makes them jump out of a window. <laughs> Um, yeah. which when we think back to like when Gavriel would turn into a fox, he would also take his clothes off and then turn into a fox and then he would put them back on. So like it tracks. It was just very sudden. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they fly, they jump out of a window and they both turn into flying creatures. Yeah. Um, but Stannis is like, uh, she's, she's a dragon. She's a dragon. She was never a snake. Um, and then they use the word She's telly. She's a winged snake. Yes. They use the word telly. Mm, um, yeah. Which did, I'm you, going did you like to... look up what that means or something? I didn't, but now I'm I'm going to look it up in the glossary in the back of the book because Rena Rossner put the time to put I it for... together, so I think I should look it up. Um, I forgot this book had one of those. A telly is a constellation or heavenly serpent. 
Ooh. So not really a dragon, but like dragon-like. Um, Heavenly serpent. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And then she has a cool quote where she's like, I was never a snake. I was a dragon who hadn't found her wings yet. <laughs> oh. I just want good things for these poor girls. And I just don't think it's going to happen. And that makes me sad. Well, you've read it. <laughs> I didn't read. I did read all of it. Yeah, that wasn't a did. spoiler, though. <laughs> I still want good things to happen for them. Okay. Um, so they're flying around. It's very like... It's very... It's um, very Aladdin. Yes. It's very magic Aladdin, Magic carpet Jasmine. ride. Yeah. Uh-huh. Except that they are flying themselves. They need no magic carpet. Um, yeah. And she makes it snow, which was interesting. Um... And then specifically, Stana, Stana makes it snow. Yes, sorry. Somehow, and mm-hmm. doesn't realize she did it. But Theodore's like, "Hey, you did that." She's like, "What?" <laughs> I mean, this is the first time she's actually transformed into a creature. So she's, you know, this is all. Well, she had before, but not like this. Not like this. Not fully. Not flying. Right. She had. She had gotten scaly and snaky. Right, but still like but human. Not winged. Yeah. Um, And then Stana turns into a fox. So she could have been a fox. (laughs) And Theodora... Didn't know we could do that. Right, no. And Theodora turns into a wolf. This gave me very... um, You mentioned Aladdin, but it reminded me of the snowman. When the kid is flying (laughs) with the snowman in the air. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, yep. I could hear that music playing over this chapter in my mind. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, exactly. What I'm, I'm not going to hum it because it will probably get copyright. Uh, who knows? But mm-hmm. anyway, that's what was going I feel less. Head. I feel more safe about that one than a Disney song. But well, still, we're not yeah. going to tempt fate. Do, 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 uh, do. That's all you get. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Um, and then they finally return back and they have some private time. <laughs> Yeah. Together. Yeah. Um, As couples do after they turn into magical <laughs> flying creatures. Sure. It's totally fly normal. around town. <laughs> and then they just land. And I'm just like, no one saw you. You live in a castle and you've turned into giant animals and flew away and no one saw that. I'm wondering if that's going to come back to bite them. Like if Ivan knows mm. about their powers now. I don't know. Um, but also you can yeah. turn into dragons. Why are you going back to... Ivan Alexander, who is the worst TM ever. Like, you need to go into his room and turn into a dragon and be like, hands off. If you tell anybody about this, I'm going to murk you. Like, no one will ever find your body. (laughs) Right. I mean. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Um, So after they have had their, like, evening together in so many ways um stana asks theodora why she doesn't just turn into a man if that would solve her problems since she can turn into all of these things and theodora explains that even when she was prince theodore she was still herself that was just how stana saw her because stana Mm -hmm. knew her and so this is where the book gets into like the discussion of like gender and non-binary and gender fluidity, which this is not something that I am an expert in. Um, yeah. But I mean, either, but I thought that the way that Renna Rossner handled this character was very artfully done. And, um, Mm -hmm. I appreciated it a lot in the book. Yeah. I thought it was really well done and I, I liked it. Um, Mm -hmm. There were there was that moment where it was like was, well Stan is like why don't you just turn into a man and and in my head I was like hmm, I don't know if that's really I mean Theodora said earlier that like growing up she wished she was a boy sometimes but it's just like I don't know if that's really I don't know right. if she has said that she still feels that way so I was like hmm, I don't I don't think I would peg her as like transgender no. I think she's definitely non-binary and just kind of I am me right and like um, gender sometimes fluid sometimes I were. Yeah. yeah, sometimes I wear pants and sometimes I wear dresses. And they're both sometimes me. Sometimes I have, yeah, 
sometimes I have long hair, sometimes I shave it all off. And right. whatever, I'm me. Right. Um, I'm just Theodore or Theodora or whatever. Or an uh, owl. Whatever you see me. Or a black dragon or a wolf or whatever. Yeah. 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 So it was just a, there was one line in particular that stood out to me that I need to flip back to to make sure I get it right. Um, that I thought was really good. Let me hunt that down. Um, okay. It's this, it's this whole thing. It was just like, she, I feel like she, uh, Renner Ostner really like encapsulated the, I mean, I, as someone who is not non-binary, I can't speak to it, but it seems to me like she encapsulated the experience well in this in this line. Um, I can only be what I am, nothing more. When I'm an owl, I'm still me. When I'm a wolf, I'm still me. A dragon, still me. When I am Theodora or Theodore, I'm still me. That doesn't change. People will always put you in a box when they see you one form or another, but you see and accept everything that I am, and that is why I'm with you. I can be whatever I wish to be. You see all of me. Others only see what they want to see. And I was just like, oh, that's like every every time that someone who is like trans or non-binary gets like misgendered, you know, mm -hmm. like um, people only see what they want to see yeah. instead of like who you are or like right. how you choose to express your gender. Mm -hmm. um, so I just thought that that was a really moving section in that I feel like she captured what that feels like for those people yeah. pretty well yeah. in my mind. Um, again, can't necessarily relate, but it seemed like it was a well done. Right. Uh, as, as people there. who are not authorities on it, because I do believe in letting marginalized voices speak for themselves. And that's a community that's definitely marginalized. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that this is a, this is a a good example of helping help like good for helping those of us that are still learning. Yes, and still and still trying to kind of navigate those waters because it's for a lot of people it's like a new thing. Right. Um, and it is there's learning involved in that. Yeah, I think it's good to have this kind of representation in a piece of fiction Absolutely. so that it gives people who who don't interact with uh, with that type of person every day, gives them an opportunity to like interact, even if it's through fiction, you know, it's still good to have right. that kind of representation in fiction. Well, and so. also like you may think that you haven't had any of those interactions, but you don't know. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, don't assume. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to have that representation in fiction. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, and I, th I thought them having the conversation was important because they have it after Stana has already fully accepted Theodora for whoever she is. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. So, it was very well done, in mm -hmm. my opinion. So. Yeah. Um, and then so after we have that conversation <laughs> um Wait, really Theodora... quick, back back backpedaling for just a second just to acknowledge okay. that um theodora can turn into an owl right she's done that before yes but she also says that she is a dragon when she needs to be mm -hmm. so like she can turn into a black dragon like her pops could right. so that i um, feel like is going to come come back at some point later was that actually backtracking did or did she talk do about that? that later no i'm I, that's what i was just thinking or did that actually happen like did she did she? I think I feel like they both turned into dragons at one point. Were I think flying you're right. around as like a, as like a yin yang fiery dragon and black dragon duo. I have know? a note. They're a bit of yin and yang, <laughs> balanced. Yin and yang. So, yeah. 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 I said yin and yang. They're a bit, they're a bit of yin and what is it? Yin and yang. <laughs> they're a bit of yin and yang, like balanced that way, um, mm -hmm. because she even talks about how Theodora is like dark and cold and sauna is warm and light um yeah so um you're the slither into my hufflepuff <laughs> yeah um theodora does theorize about the start of culture and religion and like how like all of these stories have like a similar starting point because she's talking about her mm. father's um faith in the old gods when he came over the mountains, that whole thing with Margita and the monastery and the 
that whole story mm-hmm. that happened a couple weeks or a couple sections ago. Um, that old chestnut. Yeah. And how, like, it's a similar... How did she put that? How it was like when they talked to the Christians in that region, it was like a similar story or something like that. Um, yeah, it was. And Stana made a point of remembering her mother saying that there's a, like a million different ways to tell the same story. Mm-hmm. And basically they were looking at like all these different like folk tales and and religions and just thinking mm-hmm. of like the common the common threads between them all mm-hmm. and the the roots of them being the same right um which is which is a really interesting take um i'm not i mean maybe but it, it's maybe a take that someone in that time period probably wouldn't have had <laughs> but uh this is this is fantasy it is fantasy it's, it's cool it's cool it's mm-hmm. all good yeah um well and th- she talks about like the white mist dragon and the black dragon fighting. And I was like, does this mean that their dads fought? Because up until this point, we've known that the white dragon is Ava, um, their father. Yeah. I'm like, was for a second, I was like, was she talking about the night that they like ran away and right. when dad turned into a giant cloud dragon and like went off to fight the, the mist? Right. Is that what she's talking about right now? I think so. Yeah. Which is yeah. mind blowing. Um, and then, and then there was a part where she was talking about how every one of us contains multitudes. Every one of us contains a spark of God, which is a very Jewish take from my understanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was really pretty. (laughs) It was Mm -hmm. well written. Um, and then, and then Theodora gives her another ring, which Donna takes, but she's like hesitant now. And she Mm -hmm. has come to the realization that she doesn't want to be owned by anyone, even though she loves Theodora. She's like come to this realization and like finding herself through this journey of like shape shifting into different creatures and everything that she is she is bigger than than being owned by somebody. And she doesn't Mm -hmm. crave that anymore. Yeah. Which was a big bit of character growth for her. (laughs) Because that's all she's wanted. Mm-hmm. This whole time. To be her own person. To be a strong, independent woman. Absolutely. She's got to get her away from that. I have an Alexander creepo. Um, but, yeah. Ugh, now she's going to have his kids. I know. Uh, Anna. <laughs> I know, it's terrible. This is terrible. all your fault. You picked this book. <laughs> I had no idea, and I have no regrets. I have been. Thoroughly yeah, enjoyed right. this you're book right. and our discussions around mm-hmm. it. So, um, okay, that was the end of our our very long, long sauna section, and now yes. we're back yep. to Laptiza. How's how's our star yeah. girl doing, Joseph? She is upsetty spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, she's not having a good time. No. Uh, in fact, I mean, one could say probably having a bit of a manic episode maybe have like uh she, mm-hmm. mania like yeah. uh she's losing it yeah she's, and she she is understandably so <laughs> uh she is yeah basically it's it's another poetry section mm-hmm. um just a lot of like where are my babies how can i find them is anyone going to help me god are you going to help me why can't I have my babies? Um, she talks about how her breasts feel full. <laughs> well, and, okay, but that's because she, she can hear her babies crying, and that, maybe you don't know this, but like I, nursing yeah, no, mothers, that, like that's a that's a, a biological trigger for them. Um, it just kind of like it. I wasn't expecting to hear her say that, and if, when I heard it in the audio book while I was oh, driving right. home, I was just like, "Whoa!" Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot you listened to this section. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was, and at the end of like the rantings of like, "Where are my babies? Mm-hmm. Um, how can I be with my babies?" Um, you'll have to walk me through like her thought process, but it ends with her contemplating jumping off the balcony. Yeah. So. So after she has this, like, she's she's going through, like, an existential crisis. It's like a um, meltdown. Yeah. And um, she 
she makes a point of noting that there are leaves outside her window. She can't see the stars anymore. And it's as if these two aspen trees sprouted overnight. Which we know mm-hmm. from the last, so um, part 16, that that was a result of Anna blessing the babies where Margita had tried to murder them. Um, mm-hmm. And... And then her poetry section ends with her contemplating stepping off her balcony. Mm -hmm. And we don't get a lot of thought process. Did she give any kind of Wait, I thought that she gave some kind of reason, like maybe, maybe the star man will catch me if I jump off the balcony. Maybe, you know, um, let me look. Ugh, I flipped the gross Stana chapter. Ugh, get out. Perhaps if I step out onto the balcony and fall, a star will catch me. And let us all say amen. Maybe the stars will catch me. Yeah. I legit, when she said, and let us all say amen, I was like, did she just, did she just die? I had to look and see if she had any more chapters after this. The next chapter is hers. <laughs> yes, it is. So. And the first line, the first line, spoiler, I am still out on the balcony. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> is the first line. Oh, good. Oh, good. All right. Yes. So. Um, yeah, so that was So our girl, powerful. our star girl, she is not doing good, understandably yeah. so. But mm-hmm. all of her poetry sections are written so well, which um, mm-hmm. this is something that I love about Renna Rossner because her other book, The um, Sisters of the Winter Wood, which we haven't read. I may be butchering mm-hmm. that title. Anyway, that book is also like, there's two sisters. One of them only writes in prose and the only, other one only writes in poetry. And it's so mm. good. It is so good. Highly mm-hmm. recommend. Um, nice. So anyway, I love, I love the poetry inclusion here. So. Nice. Yeah. I think that, uh, <sighs> like I said, I said it in the last section, I'm a, I'm a need some good things to happen to people at some point here. I, I really hope that good things happen to at least some, not all, but at least, okay, some good lasting things that yeah. don't just end in misery and trauma. Uh, I guess we'll see. Yeah. You have a look on your face like I'm going to be disappointed. Um, I just, I just, <laughs> no. I think, I think. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. Okay, good. Because I can't say anything about making a spoiler, and I just don't want to. So I don't want you to spoil anything. No. So uh, tune in next time. So actually, it's just finish the book now. Yeah. It's finish. Finish it. Yep. There are three cycles left, but they're, you know, not terribly long. So. Yeah, and that's awkward. You don't want to, like, split three into, like, two and one. That's dumb. So, Yeah finish the book yeah and we'll catch you next week finish not next week yeah. the next week you know how we do this until next yeah yeah <laughs> until next time happy reading and we'll talk to you next time later